Hello and thank you for this opportunity. Today I will talk about learning and teaching construction with focus on thin tile vaulting. Thin tile vaulting, also called Catalan, Timbral and Guastavino vaulting, is a Mediterranean ceiling craft that has two distinct features. First is the unit of construction which is lightweight horizontally positioned tile. The second is the fast sitting mortar. The two result in a technique that needs little or no formwork. However, it needs skill, a technical and tacit one. And so the learning of the technique is crucial to its preservation and development. And this traditionally happened in two places. First is within families of trade, and the second is more formal and took place in a three-year program in schools of art. However, this passing down mode, with it there was another mode which took the technique across regions and sometimes continent, such as when Juan Bautista Lazaro brought the thin tile vaulting from builders from Catalonia to Madrid for building his projects at the beginning of the 20th century. The knowledge of these builders was essential 50 years later in the construction after the Spanish Civil War, as you can see here in the two images. Or we can also think of Rafael Guastavino and his son Guastavino Jr., who also during the, half, uh, the first half of the 20th century in North America contributed to more than 1,000 projects Unfortunately, we know little about his builders and if he had training programs within his company. Recently, the technique is being revised. Since 2012, workshops of training for students in schools of architecture is very prevalent, such as in Madrid, Valencia, Alcalá de Henares, and Barcelona. Also, more voc vocational alike summer school, offering the similar workshop during summer, usually a one-week workshop. Some of these workshops I attended in 2015. So Spain and these workshops and the builders inside Spain became a source of global thin tile knowledge. In 2007, Spanish builders from Extremadura were recruited to work with masons from the UK to build the Dome of Pines Calix Center in Kent, perhaps the first modern thin tile vaulted project in the UK and outside Spain. However, as we can see, today's transfer of thin tile vaulting is less about passing down and more about passing on. Short, uh, short, concise workshops are prevalent in contrast to the master apprentice model, the traditional one. This prompts the following questions. How can thin tile vaulting, as an example of construction craft, be situated in the construction industry? How can today's short and in focus learning of thin tile vaulting offer the preparation of builders for further autonomous thin tile application. To address these challenges, I will examine two thin tile vault projects, one in Rwanda and one in Spain, through an, an ethnographic study. The study will draw on two social learning theories to, ex to explore how training is connected to the social and economic context of each project. The first explains the content of education, and the second explains the context of the education. For the content of learning, uh, Bernstein's soci sociological theory explains pedagogy in two discourses. The first is what we regulate as knowledge, and the second is how we regulate the knowledge and the transmission of knowledge. He uses classification and framing for these, for these two uh, terms. Now, the two, framing and classification, capture the boundaries and the relationship of education subjects, spaces, activities. For example, Ribos clar clarification and framing produce a highly specialized and top-down curriculum, such as someone saying, I teach history, whereas weak classification and framing result in a more integrated bottom-up learning. Think of someone saying, I teach or I learn with students. Now for the context, I will use the work of Jean Leve and Etienne Wanger on situated learning, which shifts the focus from plans for teaching to experience of teaching. Now, this framework talk about community of practice, which, which is a collective movement on learning and practicing something. In our case, we're talking about Tintal Craft. The three pillars of community of practice are domain, community, and practices. In our case, we have two zones here. One is how 
the classification and framing in the content is changing and how is that reflected on the, on the experience of the learning. So in this case, for example, where the technique, uh, where the domain is a technique, community is cultivated and practice is just thinking about uh, work relief, we're here talking about task oriented sort of activities. Whereas when these things elevate with time, we will be talking about how Thintile Voltic is perceived as um, uh, a technique that it's a profession uh, and a design practice. So here with these two from we have to we, with this framework we have two two things to to keep our eye on. First is how to map the movement between classification and framing during the workshop towards the end of it, and the second how is that resulting in um, the changing of the discourse of the experience of practice itself. Now, this method, myth the methodology that I worked with in my ethnographic study incorporates also non-textual tools for the observation and exploration of the, of the training. Recently increasing in ethnographic studies, m the tools that I include are sketching, drawing, mapping, and sometimes even making with uh, the participants or the trainees in these workshops. So let's start with the project in Rwanda. Rwanda Cricket Stadium is a three volt pavilion located out in the outskirts of Kigali, and it's designed by Light Earth Design. The stadium is a three volt pavilion that houses players facility and space for, for, for viewing the, the cricket for spectacles. The vault were inspired by the hilly landscape of Rwanda and the geometry of a bouncing ball. Now the vault are built using stabilized earth tile made on site by local labor, covered with stone but lift, lift exposed in the interior. Workers were trained to produce the tiles and build the vaults. For the construction of the vaults, the one week training program was lit by James Bellamy and followed by the full scale construction. By the way, James was one of the masons in the Pine Scalex project in, in, uh, in the UK in 2007. So, after a general introduction, trainees were instructed to join two tiles with plaster, beginning with trying to bring their attention to the challenging behavior of the fast-setting mortar and to avoid wasting it. The second challenge was contrasting the vault geometry to the habitual construction of a brick wall. Of a brick wall. Joining tiles at an angle was in the core of the workshop right from the outset. These two challenges converged into an activity of building a small catenary arch with multiple layers. After the workshop, the construction started on a full shuttering of the edge arches, which allowed for a transitional period to gain confidence after training and before moving to the vault sweep, which is done without any shuttering. Now, following the guide, following the guide work of the vault, six group of two, a vault maker, a plaster mixer, were placed. The full-scale building was also discrete and organic. It has like a discrete and organic e evaluation process. Builders felt less comfortable with the vaulting, were assigned to mix plaster, and vice versa. The process resulted in groups of vault maker, plaster mixer, and other layers builders. So by the time James left the project during the construction of the second vault, the dynamic of the training had changed entirely from being reliant on the trainer's decision to form an autonomous system of builder. And here you can see how the experiences are changing from being um, uh, merely a recipient to, an, to, to, to engage actively in the, in the construction of the vaults. So the work in Rwanda Cricket Stadium started with a strong classification and framing, um, but it ended with weaker framing. However, such training showed a positive engagement among the workers and translated into an excellent understanding of the technique, but lacking a holistic approach for a design geometry, hindered both by the economic and hierarchical divi dividing powers in the construction site. Workers in Rwanda can definitely build more vaults. However, this is unlikely to happen outside the construction project like Rwanda Cricket Stadiums. 
The trainer and the design team were aware of these realities and they addressed that the aim of the training was to prepare builders within construction companies for similar projects. Moving to the second project in Spain. This is an outdoor pavilion at the Center of Art and Culture in Santa Pola Alicante. Was designed and built as part of a vocational training program aimed for a rehabilitation uh, program of the house. The design has a triangle plan with three catenary vaults at the edge. While exhibiting a, comp a compositional complexity, vaults were aimed to be easily built, giving their modularity. This was because the construction of the vault needed to be customized so that the trainees and the trainers can both, build, uh, the, the, can both be participating in the project. The training, led by Salvador Gomez, the Spanish uh, master builder, um, integrated design with construction. Uh, I was part of that training, and it included theory sessions and discussions with hands-on activity using chains, strings, and small blocks to explain the line of thrust in load-bearing vaulting. On site, we used a chain and a wooden board, both to form find the section, then to use it in the vault after we flip the, the board as a formwork. Because the group of trainees is small, the interaction with the builders in the pavilion was very vibrant, with questions and comments. In a nearby area, participants teamed to two to replicate the construction of the pavilion, but at a smaller scale. So with light supervision, students try to apply what they are learning from the last structures with a margin trial and error. They were also allowed to experiment with their small structures. So unlike regular craft training, the Thintal vaulting workshop in Santa Pola starts from the general to the specific. It is kind of the opposite what happened to Rwanda. The result was delivering a comprehensive examining of how vaults work, which proved beneficial when training developed. The shift uh, from the general to the specific relinquished any division between subjects of learning, theory, application, trainees, and trainers. The evaluation and pacing of the project were not essential during the workshop, except for the last day when the participants were asked to build a vault in one day. This model of training offered ex extended sense of personal authorship and a zone of trial and error. As you can see here. So while the students were able to give various examples of vaulted structures from their mind, the realization of these faults will need more training on the technique for well-executed structures. So they will need to practice more and more. So the two projects showed a two complementary training mode. One is practice training and one is expanded training. In practice training, the focus is on the application which include the control of the sitting time of the plaster, how you put the tile, where it's the opposite on the, on, on, the, on the expanded training, where you start from design and you end up with the technique. Choosing and constructing the two models is related to the reading of the project context, the dynamic of powers and the realities of materials and resources. Building craft training should be situated at the intersection between three industries, artisanal work, construction and restoration, but such situation is inevitably lengthy process. So however, instead of approaching training by its length, it can be described by its nature. So the goal of practice training can be achieved by activities, and the goal of the principal training can be achieved through community of artisans, apprentices, and architects. Training craft is the ab ability to move between activities and communities of the craft. And this model is now becoming central proposal for our training initiative CERCA in Valencia. CERCA stands for the dialogue between architects and designers from the one hand and master builders from the other. As it's based on pilot projects with School of Architecture and National Vocational and Employment Training Center in Spain, we think that proposed this, these proposed training models are also relevant to design education within schools of architecture. It shows that holistic and general approach to learn a construction craft lead to a specific tacit knowledge with short but rigorous iterations of sessions, where no task is a small task. Therefore, we were aiming to extend the work of our, of, of our activities in CERCA, which we are think of it as a fab lab with um, not only machines, but also the experience of masters uh, of crafts in Spain. And we are trying to expand our work for education, research, and policy. Through platform and cyclical activities of training workshops for architects and masons, 
and innovation and dissemination initiatives, CIRCA aims to reactivate design and the heritage of the building. From here, our motto comes, remember the future. Thank you very much.